My name is Lily Morgan, and I am the representative elect for House District 3, which is the beautiful Rogue, Illinois, and Applegate Valleys, uh, otherwise known as Grants Pass uh, through Cave Junction area down in Southern Oregon. And uh, it's just gorgeous down here. It's been a beautiful fall. We get most of the seasons here, so that's kind of fun to have all four. I entered public service um, really before ever entering politics uh, in college. I, I joined the campus security department, and when I got out of college, I became a 911 dispatcher, also volunteered as a reserve deputy, and then uh, went into parole and probation, where, where I liken it to being a social worker with handcuffs and a gun. Uh, but it is the opportunity to really meet people where they are and see what their needs are and try to help them accomplish their goals versus dictating what they are for them. And it was a really good career. And it um, gave me the courage to run for city council 10 years ago. And so I ran for Grants Pass City Council and I served for almost six years and really saw the needs in our county uh, for more leadership. And so I ran for county commissioner in 2016 and was elected and have just completed my first term. And all of the impacts of a county commissioner, we realize, are interacting with the state and the opportunities for state policy and budgets and, and different decisions they make that impact us at the local level. I really wanted to help be a part of that system. And so running for state representative was to further our local community and to make sure that there's good policy decisions being made or to at least advocate for those policy decisions. My district is primarily made of small businesses. Uh, we have a couple large employers that are uh, hospital and a traded sector business, but for the most part, uh, we are very small in comparison to anywhere else. And that is the uh, foundation of our community and we have to continue to support those businesses. And uh, we have a very philanthropic community as well. We have more nonprofits per capita than anywhere, it seems like. And uh, with that, we're trying to take care of other people in a, a way that really just meets their needs here in our community. And that means that we need to keep state government a little smaller so that the local businesses can thrive and continue to give to our community. So uh, I want to continue to advocate in that way as well. It was definitely different, and I spent a lot of time calling uh, people I didn't know, and so uh, utilizing call lists, and it's really intimidating um, calling and not knowing who the person is on the other line, but what I found is there were some really neat conversations that came out of it and opportunities to try to help some people and get them connected with services amidst the COVID shutdown, and so uh, you know, two different men that I called had both been married well over 50 years and their spouses were in memory care facilities and they were not able to visit. And it, it was heart wrenching to hear their stories. Another lady I spoke with had just lost her husband three weeks before. And so it really wasn't about campaigning anymore. It was about connecting with people and hearing uh, how these circumstances right now were affecting them. And that was the most meaningful for me in the uh, election process in the campaign is being able to connect with people and hear their stories about um, just what was important to them. In a positive way, I would love to see the ability to tackle the housing situation in Oregon. Our housing costs continue to rise, which impacts uh, recruitment for business, it impacts homelessness, it impacts every walk of affordable housing to low income housing. Everybody is impacted by the lack of inventory. And I know that there were laws passed 40 some years ago that were meant to keep urban sprawl from happening, to be intentional about um, protecting different zones. But what it has done is created such a level of urbanization that those in the rural areas who enjoy living in smaller communities don't have the freedom to build the way they need to. And regulations have gotten to the point that building is expensive and it's just not happening. There's also, of course, the issue of a uh, workforce and, and trying to try to find the way of, of generationally replenishing the workforce to keep that process going. 
I believe that we'd be able to afford housing and have enough if we allowed a little more flexibility in building homes. And if we can help get people off the streets, we can help have affordable housing, we can help with business recruitment if we had enough and to meet everybody's needs while still maintaining some of the pristine that Oregon's wildlife is and, and different recreational places as well. So there can be a better balance than what we have right now. Mental health is another area that is of great concern to me. Uh, our system needs to be improved upon and uh, I have worked with Judge Wolke here in Josephine County for the last few years uh, and he has been leading up the process of trying to revise the mental health uh, commitment process in Oregon so that we can be more responsive and helpful to people. And uh, law enforcement has also said that's a high priority for them, is finding a better way of interacting with those with mental health issues. And so with my background um, in criminal justice and my background as a parole officer, I've also been the liaison for mental health and public health as a commissioner. I believe that's something that I can continue to advocate for. And of course, affecting all of us right now is the wildfires and, and having good policy for forest management that uh, will um, get everybody at the table and get something done versus just continuing to argue about what the best process is. So hoping to actually come up with solutions that would work for all of us and we'll see how that goes.